I grew up with Mike. Uh, we lived in the same block in the projects. And uh, as a kid, he was just always there. Like, we, he was uh, maybe a month old of the night. And, uh, you know, we would play baseball in the summer and football in the back. And we'd go to school every day. Um, he was a good student. And he's a good friend, you know. Uh, he used to like to eat snow and, you know, tell him to eat the yellow snow. And, uh, <laughs> But uh, just as, uh, you know, all kids, we, you know, we had a lot of fun. And then when I got down to like, grammar school, we walked up to St. Francis. There was a, a play up at St. Francis of Sales, St. Patrick's Day. And we'd all get up there and I think we were probably, uh, you know, uh, not the greatest singers in the world. And, Sometimes the nuns would say, you know, just move your lips, you know. <laughs> but uh, just a red-blooded American kid having fun growing up and playing sports. And, and he was always a serious, uh, serious academic, you know. You know, he was always pretty much in the honor roll at St. Francis. And, you know, it got to a point like at Latin school. I don't think a lot of people really seen him a lot because you know how demanding that school is academically. And then he had, like, it was football and hockey. So there wasn't a lot of extra time for him. He worked for years in the summers at the uh, public gardens, peddling the swan boats. And uh, his, uh, his mother would tell us that, you know, like he'd wake up with, you know, really bad cramps in his legs, you know. Uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I guess a, a rite of passage from, you know, peddling those, you know, all those tourists around. Uh, but, uh, good football practice. Yeah, good football practice. I was working in the public garden with an idiot stick, picking up the rubbish, and Mike was piling the swan boats, so we met there. So we developed a friendship, and then over the years, uh, I'd bring Mike up to Holy Cross for football training. I'd drive him up and got very friendly with all the fellas up there. But it was just a great relationship that Mike had. It was a funny story. Mike would go up there with his, uh, his clothes, etc., and he roommate with Billy Sullivan. Of course, Billy Sullivan would come in with a nice tourist of luggage and the whole nine yards, and Mike would come in with a duffel bag. So it seemed within a couple more weeks, Mike was going home with the tourist bag, and, and Billy was taking a duffel bag. It was just that it was from two economic worlds altogether different. But Mike loved it up there. He met some great friends up there. It was just unbelievable. Had a great year up there playing hockey and football. Football was in and out. He tore his shoulder up, which uh, was with him the rest of his life. It was a real problem. But it was so pleasing. I was there at the graduation when he got his degree with his father and mother, and then he got his commission to the Marine Corps. And then he came to Charlestown, and we had a great summer. A lot of parties. We're down the Cape. We had parties, parties down on the project at various people's houses. But those days, we were drinking at a place called Kelly's, which is on the corner of a Concord, Bunker Hill Street. And uh, I said, Mike, you got to go up and say goodbye to some of the guys that you probably won't see again until you get back. He said, okay. So he dressed in his dress blues and up the street he went. And it was a hot, hot afternoon, as I remember. It was, I think it was late October. And the people were standing outside houses that people lived there. You know, good luck, wish you the best. So I went into Kelly's, and all the guys were standing there, and they gave him a rousing applause, and you know, good luck, Mike. And I'll never forget all the letters. I, I used to call them letters from Mike. He'd always say, give my best to the guys from Kelly's. I mean, he was so loyal to all the guys in Charlestown, but especially these people that he got to know over the years. Not only were they contemporaries of his, but he knew their brothers or their uncles or their fathers or their parents, etc. Yeah, and as I said before, you know, all those mornings he got up early and played football, uh, you know, delivered papers, built character, and, you know, that's, that, that's yours. And he was a good man, and he stuck by his ideals. He went into the service and gave his life for the country. You know, you know it was sad. It was a... Sad day for Charleston. But, uh, 
you know, he probably wouldn't have had it any other way. Uh, we started, Stevie Driscoll, Eddie Johnson, myself, Dollar, we went to every merchant in the town and requested a dollar. So we I started a scholarship for our friend that got killed in Vietnam. Okay, and the first year we gave out $500. Now, I don't know how much we raised. Me, the accountant, in those days, we weren't keeping the, the books as straight as we wanted to. But at any rate, we gave out $500 to Bob Irvins. The reason we did it, because, again, Mike would never have been able to go to the Cross while the scholarship. And we thought it would be a fitting and lasting tribute to Mike. Little did we know, 50 years later, we're still doing it. A lot of people had their doubts, uh, as a lot of us did, but we thought we'd pursue ahead. And again, over the years, it's just been the loyal friends and supporters with uh, really no corporate sponsorship, but a lot of good generosity over the years. So it made a lot to us. And again, Mike, scholarship, we started with the need factor because it was so critical. Um, Mrs. Quinn was a homemaker and Leo Quinn worked for the city of Boston, the park department, and Mike had two other siblings. So and they grew up in the project, and there wasn't a lot of money around in those days, so it was great that he had it. So we said, well, we knew the need factor, and then we said, what are the other components can we have to make this scholarship worthy and attractive to people in the community? So we said, well, athletics, Mike was a great athlete at Latin school and at the cross, and I said, well, after that, community participation. And again, that's what we feel strongly about, what could be more community participation than Michael going in the Marine Corps and giving his life for the country. I mean, so we established that, and we thought those would be good building blocks and a backbone of an organization that would be lasting. Uh, we thought that way, and thank the Lord it worked out and it, it developed that way. So that was Michael Quinn. Uh, it was a pleasure to be his friend and to be in fine cohorts with my dear friend here, Eddie Doherty. My name is Ryan Collins, and I won the Quinn Scholarship in 2006. My name is Bridget Collier, and I won the Quinn Scholarship in 2014. I'm Devin Gallagher, and I won the Scho Quinn Scholarship in 2018. Uh, for high school, I attended Boston Latin School uh, from 7th to 12th, and then I graduated from there and went to the University of Connecticut, uh, the Storrs campus. I'm at Mass Maritime currently. So marine transportation is basically studying to be an officer on a ship, which means, you know, you navigate, stand watches, transport cargo all across the world for shipping lines. The Boston Latin School. Uh, undergrad, Bentley University, graduated 2010. Uh, graduate, got my MBA from Bentley University as well, 2011. Twice a year I travel down to Washington, D.C. With, with my work to do trainings, and uh, we always do a tour of the different uh, monuments and and every time I go to that uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall and I see Michael P. Quinn's name, it really, um, really makes me appreciate um, what he stood for and, and, and his uh, level of dedication and selflessness, um, more so than anything. Um, but uh, his friends to be able to kind of pick up that cross that he bared uh, and, to, and to carry it forward and, and to keep making sure that his name is in, in mainstream, especially in Charlestown, and to keep... Um, giving away um, you know, tuition and, 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 and uh, prize money to folks in his name is, is just truly remarkable. Um, it's amazing that 50 years later, they can now say that they give out $12,000, $10,000 to kids from Charlestown. You have so many people behind you when you go off to school or any endeavor. Um, and when I talk to other people at school, like they didn't understand the sense of community that we have here. It's 
it just shows like how incredible this Charlestown community is, you know, with only a square mile, but we got some of the best people in the world. I think it all kind of goes back to that support that I had uh, in my community and, and this group. It's, it's not something that every uh, community does. It's certainly something that you know, makes these guys uh, different and, and, and I certainly hope everyone can appreciate what they've done and what Michael B. Quinn did. There's so many people that walk before you and you learn from them and then now that I'm, you know, finished up with school, it's nice to turn around and maybe it's my time to get involved and um, so I think that's what the scholarship teaches you. Um, and always looking for kind of ways to make sure that myself and, and, and um, my organization at EY can kind of give back to Charlestown and look for ways to kind of help improve uh, the community in, in any way that we can.